Hi again, everybody, and thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act Two. As you can see, that smiling guy on the left of your screen is Celebrating Act Two's favorite food and travel writer, John Mariani. And Art always has an interesting question, don't you, Art? Oh, great. A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure on John <laughs> Mariani, of course, because he's going to have to pull out of the air his vast array of knowledge to answer this. But uh, I know that we recently spoke about uh, 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 a wonderful meal that you had at Disney World in Orlando. Uh, John and I are out here in Disneyland. And of course, uh, there are Disney properties, uh, parks all over the world. And they all seem to, uh, uh, I, I was actually there in 1955, three days after it opened in, in Disneyland in California. We run a, a, a trip with my family. And um, I don't remember there being these fancy, uh, expensive restaurants at uh, Disneyland. Yet I know that uh, over the years, they've, uh, they've actually become quite renowned for fine food. Is that something you found? Uh, I haven't been to Disneyland out there in Anaheim in a long time. From but you know, it's basically a small park mm -hmm. compared to Disney World, Walt Disney yeah. World, in Orlando, where I was just last week, uh, very happily. So I, I do I do know that Disneyland in Anaheim has a, a very fine restaurant called Napa Rose mm -hmm. and a couple of others, but uh, mainly it is built around. Um, the amusement park kind of food of a high level, but Disney, Walt Disney World was, you know, it's it, it. Walt Disney bought all of Central Florida, and he hasn't even begun to. He, the late Walt, has not begun to use use even one sixth of what he bought. And there's Epcot, and there's the Hollywood Studios, and there's the Magic Kingdom, and they keep expanding and expanding and expanding. Um, in order to bring people back and in order to entice adults who spend the money. Now, when my wife and I were going, um, people were saying, why would you go without children or four grandchildren to a place like that? You know, it's just rides and roller coasters and so forth. And I said, well, I don't play golf, but they have three golf resorts. I do go to hotels. They have some of the finest hotels on the face of the earth. I certainly like to eat well, and they have the option of, especially in the resorts, but increasingly in the parks, um, the restaurants that would compare with any in the United States easily. Um, not least because Disney has the resources. I mean, they have the, anything they want to build, anything. I mean, if you and I, John and, and Art, we wanted to build a restaurant, we pool our resources and look in a shopping mall, a Chinese restaurant just went out, we'll take over the lease, you know, and buy some new artwork and paint and so forth and buy some silverware. At Disney, it's just, hmm, let's take a an African theme. This is true. It's a place uh, there called um, Tiffin's. And let's send the Disney Imagineers to Africa and Asia for six months and let them see what's out there food wise and allow them to buy any artifacts, any pieces of fabric, baskets, anything they want and bring it back. And they will put together this multi-million dollar restaurant. Um, they also have enormous clout in the marketplace because when you, let's face it, when you um, buy as many bananas uh, as, or, or meat or, or some cuts of beef, as uh, Disney does, um, you have enormous amount, amount of clout, uh, so not least uh, fish. Um, they really, really bring in excellent, excellent seafood. Um, some of the best I, I've, I've had in the United States. Um, and, you know, they have Florida's right there and the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico and so forth, the uh, Atlantic. Um, so we were there for three days. And first of all, an adult will be dazzled by the parks. Um, they are not just amusement, but Disney does everything, you know, just so perfectly. And they've added a lot of new thrill rides because they were always behind uh, on thrill rides. They got a couple of new ones I wouldn't even begin to describe, but um, my eyeballs were falling out of my head and my stomach was up to my uh, throat. Um, terrific. But um, 
what's an adult to do about eating? Well, you could go to the uh, pavilions around Epcot where the German pavilion serves vice versa, and you could go to the Moroccan place where they serve really metze and so forth. Or you could go to the uh, Japanese places, place which has sushi. And those are all very fine. And the Italian place is uh, now has two parts. One is casual trattoria, the other is fine dining. But, uh, well, I, I'll, I'll talk, talk about one in uh, where I'd been before and I really liked 10, 15 years ago when they opened what was then MGM Studios, now it's Hollywood Studios, they call it. And it's the Brown Derby, which is a copy of the old Brown Derby uh, that opened in Hollywood back in the 1920s and 30s, where Robert Cobb uh, created the Cobb Salad. So you walk in and they had reproductions of all of the uh, caricatures on the walls of Clark Gable and Catherine Hepburn. I mean, hundreds of them. They have the same brown tufted banquettes. They have the same brown derby light sconces, um, white tablecloths, uh, excellent service, uh, so forth. And the food is right down the line, great American fare, including that magnificent Cobb salad. I mean, it's just, it's, there's only two salads in America ever really created. One's the Cobb salad and the Caesar salad, which came out of Tijuana. But the Cobb salad, the chopped salad is a, is a great one. Their food was just luscious. It was, it was very, very American, done with um, flair. So that's just one of the places in the park. Um, another place I mentioned, Tiffin's, is um, based on African and Asian journeys. So all of the food there is influenced. So you could have uh, hummus bowls uh, in, in one, as, as Met say. Uh, you would have a fish stew from Goa. You would have Indian flavors, and there would be tamarind, there'd be ma mango, and there are African flavors and North African flavors. And of course, you're sitting in this marvelous setting, surrounded by this great uh, artwork brought over. And in some, some they had totems to the ceiling, which were hand carved just for the restaurant. So it's pretty exciting. So. Um, in the resorts, though, that's where they really put their effort because they know that the kids are not necessarily the five-year-old, ten-year-old kids are not going to want to necessarily eat um, in these fancy restaurants. Uh, the fanciest is the Victoria and Albert, which was just recently redone. That's a 19-course meal for $425, which I found tedious in the extreme. Food was very good, but very precious. They have acres of microgreens that do nothing but stuck in your teeth. Um, but the food was delicious, but um, it's just too much, and it's explained at great length. And now you're going to have a wine which was aged partly in Slovenian oak and then handed over to three of the virgins in uh, Croatia who tend it till they marry. I mean, this kind of <laughs> nonsense. But it's quite an experience. I booked six months out. Um, the new place with terrific Mediterranean fare is called Topolino which is the term that Mickey Mouse goes by in Europe. In, 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 oh, in, in, yeah. You know. <laughs> um, but it has nothing to do with Mickey Mouse. And uh, I dined there with our old alumni friend from the prep, uh, Dr. Francis Jacobellis, a local dermatologist. And we feasted. First of all, you're paying $30, $40 for main courses, but you're getting an enormous amount of food. You're not paying extra for a vegetable on the side. You're not paying extra for potatoes on the side. It's all there on the plate in abundance. And as I said, um, they get first-rate seafood. They get any kind of beef or lamb they, they want. And um, it really shows uh, highly creative uh, chefs. We had a corn squash chowder there that I'd rank with any I've had uh, anywhere. You know, uh, they buy very good chickens, Bell and Evan chickens, which have a lot of flavor. And then there was Citricoast, which they're reopening. The COVID was a wonderful thing in many respects for a lot of businesses, as you know, because it forced their hand to, well, we really should de redecorate this place or recast it. And that happened all over Disney. They had months and months and months to do so. Some places are still not quite open. But uh, Citricoast uh, is another place that uh, is kind of Mediterranean in fair, uh, great wine list. Um, and all the things, the plates are very beautiful. The silverware has heft to it. The wine glasses are thin. 
the service is non pareil <clears throat> A woman doesn't get up from her chair without somebody with a waiter coming standing behind her and, and when she comes back and seating her. All of these aspects of service. Um, so with the waiter we had at Citricos, I had that 10 years ago, a wonderful guy. Um, so why would any adult go to Disney? You can go for the golf, you can go for the water, you can go for the pools, you can go for the saunas, you can go for the spas, you can go for the hotel experience. They have terrific concierges. There's nothing you cannot ask for that they will not uh, deliver. Um, if you're in, like, say, the club level, you get uh, complimentary breakfast all day long. So why go to Disney, an adult? Um, well, it's good scoping out for when you do go for your with your kids. And my granddaughter's a little young to appreciate it, none of whom could stand to wait four hours online to <laughs> get into the Snow White ride um, or, or onto the uh, Dumbo ride. But when they are old enough, uh, I will be back and um, take them and eat and dine well and drink very well. Great wine list. They can buy anything they want. Wow. Thanks. What a wonderful uh, verbal tour of Disney World. That's I have never had anybody explain to me what the attraction was before. Mm -hmm. And um, it must have been a wonderful experience for you eating your way th through Disney World. Well, you know, I went to Disneyland the year it opened, 1955. I was 10 years old. I was in awe of everything Disney. And boy, you know, Walt paid me back. Um, I came with my mother and grandmother and Andy Furia on a train, went back and forth. And it, it was as wonderful as Walt Disney promised. And when they opened Orlando, it got more and more and more wonderful. Um, so nobody, I don't care how old you are, you cannot afford to be nostalgic uh, at any of the Disney property because of your own affection for Mickey and Donald and so sure. forth, all those great movies. Um, that he turned out over the years. But aside from that, you're going to eat as well at Disneyland, Disney World, as uh, in some of the finest restaurants in the country. It's kind of interesting, John. Uh, I was actually at uh, Disneyland in California the third day it opened. And, oh, yeah? and yeah, in fact, the Dumbo ride, I, I, I was, I was uh, we have seen each other there. Uh, my uh, uh, the the Dumbo ride, my, which I was looking forward to because the the movie Dumbo was one of my favorite, wasn't operating yet. Oh. But but twenty some odd years later, I took my granddaughter to Disneyland, and Dumbo ride was open. I got to go on it, and it was magical. <laughs> but so there are more reasons than just fine dining. But uh, I appreciate the fact that that uh, your take on it and the way you look at things is always different and unique, is that Disneyland and the Disney parks are not just for kids. There's something for everybody, particularly people who like fine dining. Well, I'm told that Disneyland in Anaheim still has the Carnation Cafe. And there I am, 10 years old. In the Bronx, we didn't eat a lot of fried chicken and biscuits where I grew up. I had fried chicken and biscuits with honey and I never, ever forgot that. And apparently it's still there. Mm. Not on. Yeah. I haven't been for well, a while, we'll but to go uh, and find out. My, my, my grandchildren, uh, who are now uh, in their, uh, some of them are in their 20s and early 30s, uh, actually for many years have had uh, annual passes and they go all the time. So it is I magic just, because they do. California. One thing about one thing about Disney, which I think you know as well, is that uh, in, the, in the nighttime, the entire uh, staff goes up and they paint little Nixon in, in uh, handrails. And if a flower has been me messed with, they try to fix that so that their theory is that every day should be like the first day, the best day uh, of the experience for all the newcomers. So I looked over a four day period, I looked for little pieces of paint peeling off anything. Mm. And I found one on a handrail, but it had been marked with a magic marker in black to be fixed that day. Hmm. So the, the, the bottom line is Disney is not just for kids. No, it's for rich kids because it's close. <laughs> John, thanks so much. 
For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.